Superposition. So let's go through the main steps of principle of superposition by solving the given example. Um, the question is to find current I using the principle of superposition. So where do we have this current is over here. But before we start solving the question, let's just briefly talk what is the principle of superposition. Uh, it's all about calculating the contribution of each independent source separately and then adding them up. So now let's see what are the main steps uh, in solving the problems using the principle of superposition. So first of all, you need to select one source and turn off all other independent sources. And then you'll get the simple circuit with only one independent source, which you need to analyze and find the unknown parameter. Then you need to repeat the same procedure for all independent sources. And the last step, very simple, you just need to add up the contribution from each independent source. But there are also a couple of things you need to keep in mind. Um, when we turn off the voltage source, so you remove the voltage source, um, we'll create a short circuit like this, where the voltage is zero. So we remove the voltage source, uh, created the short circuit, voltage is zero. But when we turn turning off the current source, we'll create an open circuit. So this is the open circuit, resistor in between, a bit small. And the current now will be zero. So we'll be using these ideas uh, when we start solving our example. So now let's start solving the problem. Um, we'll probably start with two amps, so turning off two amps. That means we're creating the short circuit, so basically we can just remove it. And because this is the short circuit, we can easily remove the whole branch, like this. And now we move to the simpler circuit uh, with only one power source 20 volts, which we need to analyze in order to find current I. Because this is the first step uh, of solving the circuit, we can call this current as I1. So how to do this? First of all, we can, we can simplify the circuit. We can see that there are two resistors, 5 and 5 ohms. They're both connected in series, so instead of having two resistors, we can replace them by one resistor as 5 plus 5 ohms equals 10. So again, to make the circuit even looks easier, we replace the two resistors in series by one resistor with the value of 10 ohms, like that. So what do we have at the moment? We have a um, 10 ohm resistor connected in series to the group of two resistors, 4 and 10, connected in parallel. So in order to find current I1 flowing through 4 ohm resistor, we need to know the total current, which is here I total. Then we will be able to apply current divider and it will be quite easy to find current I1. But how to find total current? We already know that total voltage is 20 ohms, so we need to know total resistance. Total resistance is, like I already said, is um, 10 ohm resistor connected in series to 4 parallel to 10. So the total resist resistance will be 10 plus 4 parallel to 10, which is equals to 10 plus and the equivalent resistance from 4 parallel to 10 will be 4 times 10 over 4 uh, plus 10, which gives us the total resistance as 12.86 ohms. Now, once we found total resistance, we are, we are able to find the total current. So I total will be total voltage V total over R total. And that will be 20 over 12.86. 
and the total current is 1.56 amps. So I just want to replace, uh, to write the total current into the diagram, so uh, to have it, have it ready for the next step. So 1.56 amps. So once we know total current, we can see that this current is divided between 4 and 10 ohm resistors. So applying current divider, we can find current I1. I1 will be, according to current divider, we'll need to take opposite resistor 10 over the sum of two resistors connected in parallel, 10 plus 4, and multiply it by the total current, which is 1.56. And that gives us the value of the current I1, which is 1.11 amps. So now we found the first part of the answer. So we found the current I1 due to um, voltage independent power source 20 volts. So that's the value. Now let's repeat the procedure by turning off that 20 volts power source. If we remove 20 volts, we'll create a short circuit. So let's remove this first. And so we need to show that the short circuit being created like that. So just draw the line. And now we need to analyze this circuit in order to find current I. Because this is the second step, so let's name this current as I2. So what would be the strategy to find current I2? In order to find current I2, again, using current divider, we need to know the, this current in 5 ohm resistor. But we still don't know what would be that current. So going back to 2 amps uh, current source, we are going to use current divider at this node uh, in order to find current I. Let's, let's make this current I. And then we'll use this current as the total current which will be divided between 4 and 10 ohms resistors. And we apply current divider rule to find current I2. Okay, so let's see what would be the current entering this node. Uh, 2 amps is the current on this branch, but 2 amps is going downwards, opposite to the direction of this current. So that current will be negative 2. Now, let's try to find current I. What we can see, negative 2 amps is divided between 5 ohm resistor and the rest of the circuit. This. So we don't know what's the value of that resistor, so we need to find the equivalent resistance from this group. So our equivalent will be what we can see. 10 ohm resistor connected in series to 4. Um, actually, this is not right. Um, 10 ohm resistor is in parallel to 4 and in series to 5. So 10 parallel to 4 plus 5. So 10 par parallel to 4 will give us 10 times 4 over 10 plus 4 and plus 5 ohm resistor which is in series to this group. So the equivalent resistance from this group will be 12, again 0.86 ohms. Now we found the equivalent resistance and we know that current minus 2 amps is divided between 5 ohm resistor and 12.86 ohms. In order to find current I, Again, applying current divider rule. So we'll take opposite resistor as 5 ohms over the sum of two resistances, 5 plus 12.86. 
and multiplied by the total current, so times negative 2. So the current I through the 5 ohm resistor will be minus negative 0 0.56. 0 0.56 amps. Now, once we know current I, we can apply again current divider rule and find current I2. So the current I2, now this current I will be the total current uh, divided between 4 and 10 ohms resistors and current I2 will be. So taking the opposite resistance uh, 10 over the sum of two resistances 10 plus 4 and multiplied by the total current now this is negative 0 0.56 so times negative 0 0.56 amps and the current I2 will be negative 0 0.4 amps. So we just found the second part of the question, the current I2 due to 2 amps power source. Now coming back to our original circuit, we are ready to find unknown current I. So current I will be the sum of two currents, I1, the current due to um, 2 amps, and I2, the current due to 20 volts. So the total current I will be 1.11 amps minus 0.4 amps, which equals to 0.71 amps. So this is the answer for this problem. So in summary, by using the principle of superposition, we found two currents, I1 and I2. This is pretty much the same current flowing through 4 ohm resistor, but this current was due to contribution of 2 amps power source separately and 20 volts power source. And as the result, we add them up together and we got the final answer current I flowing through 4 ohm resistor which equals to 0 0.72 amps.